Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm going to be making a video on my fig cuttings. I normally don't like to make videos indoors, so I apologize if the lighting and sound sounds a little awkward. I'll try to fix as best I can in post-production. But I'm excited to make this video. I've been going a little fig crazy. I purchased about $100 worth of fig cuttings a couple months ago. I went through this process and I'll go, I'll go through it with you on how I got to this point, but today I'm going to be taking these fig cuttings Voila. some of them will have roots some of them won't I'm going to be taking the ones that do have roots and trying to up pot them so that they can continue to thrive and tell you what I've learned what I think I'm going to do different next time it was a good learning experience I'm still not very good at it the reason I'm going to be doing that as you can see there's quite a bit of root activity going on throughout this, so I want to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. So stay tuned and we'll make our video. Okay, so you take a brick of cocoa core. Just got these off Amazon. They're pretty small. Put it in the container that you're going to be growing your things in with some water. Let the cocoa course uh, soak. It'll dissolve, just kind of move it and break it down. And in just a minute, it will turn in to broken down, moist cocoa core. And you can adjust how much water you have in it by pouring some of it out if you put too much. Some people worry a lot about how much water they're putting in when they're mixing it. I'd rather just take some out later. It's not that big of a deal. All right, the next part is I'm gonna mix some perlite in with the cocoa core. This improves the drainage. It also helps retain some of the moisture and aeration as it says here on the bag. It's pretty good for cuttings. It's good when you mix it in. And I put a, a generous, healthy amount in with my cocoa core, okay? And then, all I do is meet or mix it in. Trying to keep as much of it in here as I do it as possible. And just mix it together. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna, you wanna just kinda see a a little bit of perlite and cocoa core mixed in on all the different layers that you have. This will just help in the process of keeping it moist and also keeping good drainage because you want both things. Okay, on to the next step. Anyway, um, but what you want to do when you're picking a cutting is you want each cutting to have a node. And if you're not sure what a node is, nodes are these little bumps that your leaves come out of so either another leaf or another branch will come out of it but if you break those off and you turn that into a cutting there's a good chance that roots will come out of that so you want to try to give one to two nodes per cutting and so like for example this one right here i've got one node here and another here the third node is here so i'll make that go for my second cutting or you know what i'll give it even one more I'll go right above that cutting and what a bing, what a boom. I've got a cutting. So I'm going to get a bunch of these and then I'll show you uh, the next step, okay? All right, so the next step actually has two purposes. I'm going to be taking some parafilm that you use for grafting and wrapping it around the top part of this cutting one to hold in moisture so that it doesn't dry out and two I really want to prevent fungus I've had kind of a bad experience with my fig cuttings and I want to do everything I can to avoid them producing fungal spores so this is what all my fig cuttings are gonna look like and then I'll show you my next step in just a sec all right, so the next step is placing them in the ground. So I'm placing them in. I'm going to spread them apart. So you guys might be wondering, he's not using rooting hormone. 
and there's a good reason for that. I've done some experiments recently and found that rooting hormone really doesn't help a whole lot with what I'm trying to accomplish here. Actually, I actually found I had more cases of rot and more cases of uh, roots not taking when I use the rooting hormone. So I'm gonna go with not using it. I'm making sure that I got at least a couple of the nodes under the, under the ground and that is how I'm gonna be doing this experiment. And two more. So I may end up putting just a couple more in here to, to even it out. But the next step, we're gonna put it on a heat mat and put a dome on top. And then I'm gonna wait and show you what it looks like in a few months. So we'll wait for the big reveal. All right, so this next step, I really don't know a better way to do this but I thought by you know, pulling them out, I could damage the roots. So I figured the easiest possible way would be to kind of just dump these cuttings out. And then, because there's so much root activity going on, well, maybe not like that, but, but kinda. All right, and then kind of sift through which ones have roots. All right, so this one, has roots and it looks pretty dang good. So what I'm going to do, and I think this is just IT. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these, I'm gonna put it in here, just carefully press it down in, and then fill it with some soil. Let me move this down. I don't want to lose any soil and I don't want to make a mess. Oh, you guys can't see this. Right here. So I don't want to make a mess. I'm going to kind of pack it in here. Actually, not pack it. I'm going to loosely put the soil. So what's different about this soil versus the soil that I used in the first video is it's uh, Fox Farms Happy Frog. And it's got a little more nutrients for it. So it is mixed with happy frog and cocoa core. So it's a little bit of both. Um, trying to not overdo it. All right, let's see what I got. And that was a, uh, forgive me, I'll fast forward through some of these parts, but I need to, I need to name them. So that one, IT, IT honey, I believe. If you don't label them, you're going to be in trouble. So I, T, IT honey. Okay, so I'll put that in there. And these are all figs that I've acquired somewhat recently. So let's see here. I'm trying very, very carefully to not, just to kind of massage them out. The ones that have roots. Okay, so that actually has kind of a ghost growth coming out, which is kind of cool. So this one an Aliska, I-S-C-H-I-A. I'm going to get that, get it, another one of these guys, so that I do not put extra pressure on these cuttings. And I'm putting them in very, very carefully, because you don't want to damage these new roots. Um, but also, I want to make sure that it's in there well and the roots are protected. So this is the process that I'm going to take. So from here on out, it'll be kind of in fast forward mode. And if I talk, you won't hear it. I'll do an overlap.
All right, so learning from my mistakes. This was a, uh, I was very underprepared for how many of these would actually have roots. So I'm gonna be putting them back into the container, getting a few more of these containers loaded up. But that's basically the process is taking them and from the rooted container and then putting them in one of these tall um, containers that so the roots can, can grow down. Um, some of them I don't even know what variety they are, so I'm gonna have a really fun time with this. So lessons to learn, find a way to label them better. Uh, I had a sheet that I wrote down where everything was. That sheet got thrown out like that very next day, so I wasn't able to track that. And prepare to have more success. You know, what, what I did to be successful was I had these heating pads. Let me show you guys. I had these heating pads. I set the temperature for 78 degrees. Um, and then, um, Hold it real quick. Right here is a probe. This probe goes into the soil, and then everything is then regulated by the temperature on our controller, and that helps it maintain the, the temperature that the roots need. And I'd say the success rate of all these cuttings was close to 80%, which is pretty good for a first time trying to really do this. So, oh, you see my grow light just came on because it's too cold. So. That's my takeaway from doing this. You can be successful, use a heat lamp, uh, get these tall containers to transplant them in. If I were to do it over again, I probably would have just started with these and put these in this container so I could avoid this step and then label the containers better. That's what I do. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I learned a lot from this process. I'm gonna continue trying to make it work out better. Hopefully you guys learned how to do it as well. It's pretty stinking easy. And uh, subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate all the support. Thanks, bye. Hey guys, the video's over. I got 35 pick trees. What are you doing here? If you haven't subscribed, do it. Catch you later.